Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss macrominerals and vitamins. Microminerals have some unique characteristics when feeding in dairy cattle rations. First of all, they are fed at very low levels, usually expressed as milligrams per cow per day. And when measuring them in rations, expressed as parts per million or in some cases parts per billion. Usually there is very little testing that occurs in the field and organic sources are now being looked at as supplemental sources of micronutrients. This PowerPoint will look at various levels of recommended micronutrients in the ration. The first column is NRC 2001. If you look at the booklet, they will have range values. I selected very individualistic numbers here. So you can be slightly higher or lower from these values, but rather than give you a range, I gave you one value. Second of all, we are recommending in Illinois extension, the levels. Notice they are very similar to the NRC, except perhaps slightly higher in iodine. You'll notice the iron has a keratin or a star by it, indicating this is supplemental sources. A real question on bioavailability of iron in the literature. And you can see we are higher on manganese. This is based on some Ohio State study data that has come out since the new NRC. Zinc is also slightly higher. The third column is from an older NRC, and that's the mass maximum numbers. And that's an important concept. Yes, we can feed too many micronutrients as they may interfere with each other, and this would be the maximum level to put in the ration dry matter. Another way of looking at mineral levels, and that is the milligrams per day. I really like this PowerPoint. This will tell you how many milligrams per cow per day, and you must be able to understand how to analyze feed tags and calculate it based on intake. So we're looking at two milligrams of cobalt. Some companies will go up to three or four times this level, so don't be surprised to find eight or 10 milligrams per cow per day. Copper, 200 milligrams, of which about one third of it should be organic sourced, 12 milligrams of iodine, 500 milligrams of iron, and some companies will drop this out because of the high levels found in feedstuffs in that region of the United States. 800 milligrams of manganese, 3 to 6 milligrams of selenium, depending if it's dry cows or lactating cows. The lower number for dry cows, the higher number for lactating cows, and of course a star there would indicate for dry cows 100% coming from organic sources. For the 6 milligram level, half of it coming from organic sources, and zinc 800 milligrams per day, again one third coming from organic sources. If we look at selenium, certainly we can look at such things as organic sources. We'll discuss that a bit later here in the, in the PowerPoint. Next, we'll take a look at injectable. If we inject selenium, basically it will clear in about 14 days, a half-life of 14 days, and clears in three weeks, which means you have to re-inject probably about every month if you're going the injectable sources. Many farmers will inject selenium when cows go dry about two weeks before calving, and then about two weeks before the breeding period would occur on an injectable program. And if you feed selenium, if you are deficient, it may take two or three months for it to increase an impact on the cow health and raise blood levels. Therefore, some people will actually feed it and inject it. That is really not legal if you look at the, the guidelines on the injectable sources, but that will get blood levels up higher quicker and then let the feed levels catch up with it. The legal level is 0.3 parts per million in the ration dry matter. Let's quickly look at several of the micro minerals here and bring you up to speed on what's really hot and exciting in the field. We know zinc has a key factor in immune system improvement, both in beef and dairy cattle. It has also been found by some other workers that it affects keratin formation in the teat itself, therefore a nice tie to utter health and somatic cell count, which leads into the third point, some pretty clear data, especially with organic zinc, of lowering somatic cell count. A number of studies done in this area as well. It also has some impact on hoof and foot effects in terms of making the foot harder, and that probably relates to some of its effect it has on skin integrity. So certainly there's a number of key functions that zinc comes into play, and the organic zinc can be a real player in this. Next look at copper. Some work out of Kentucky would indicate some effects on mastitis, lowering severity and the amount of mastitis in herds. We do know there is an antagonism between uh, copper and zinc. So if you feed very, very high levels of copper, uh, you will tie up zinc and vice versa. We also know jerseys are more sensitive to copper. If you go over about 40 to 50 parts per million, there is a risk of having some health problems with Jersey cattle. And the liver is the best way to test it, taking liver samples. And the best time to do that if you have an animal that's going to be slaughtered for use for meat, for example, on a farm, be an easy way to get a liver analysis to see what the status would be. 
Some of the other micro minerals have smaller functions. Manganese has an impact on reproduction. And as I said earlier, the new work from Ohio State says those number requirements are higher than we have in the current NRC. Iodide is excreted in milk. And so FDA has certainly looked at this to be sure we don't go excessively high in iodine because it would be high in milk and that has some human ramifications as well. Cobalt is a key requirement for vitamin B12 synthesis, so its major function is in the rumen through B12. And there are some studies now coming out of Minnesota showing higher activities and benefits to higher levels of cobalt. Iron is very controversial because of its availability and soil contaminations. Some parts of the United States we can find as high as 800 to 900 parts per million, but the question is, is it just contamination or is it biologically available to the animal? And there's new work looking at anemia and lactating dairy cattle. Now let's switch gears and look quickly at organic minerals. Organic minerals simply mean that the mineral, in this case you look at the bottom of the PowerPoint, you'll see zinc. Zinc is tied into some type of organic structure. This happens to be an amino acid. So certainly we can see how it's tied in versus being a zinc sulfate or zinc chloride. It is tied to an amino acid, a protein, or some other organic structure. The feed industry classifies them four ways. One as an amino acid complex. Zinpro would be an example of that. Zinc methionine. Uh, zinc and amino, amino acid chelate, which simply is another classification. The metal protonate, this is probably one of the more common ways that organic minerals are found in dairy rations. And of course, they can be also a metal polysaccharide complex, and that would be your cobalt product that's found in some supplements. Some of the classic research was done here at the University of Illinois with Dave Baker. And he did some analyses looking at zinc availability using chicks as a model. And you can see when zinc sulfate was that at 100% availability, zinc methionine goes up to 206, meaning it's twice as biologically available, and zinc oxide down at 61. And once we get by that rumen of that dairy animal, the digestive tracts and function between other animals should be somewhat similar. So one of the questions is when and why would I use organic trace minerals in a dairy ration? First of all, we know organic minerals are not antagonized with other minerals, which means do not become tied up or complex. For example, iron can really tie up zinc levels in the diet. Phosphorus can tie up some minerals. We know the molybdenum and copper can be complex. So certainly there's no antagonism, which means what we feed should have some biological availability to the animal. Certainly we know the form of the mineral is important, and we'll talk more about that a bit later. We also know that organic trace minerals tend to stimulate biological processes. One key one is immune health, for example. We also appear that organic trace minerals, especially tied to amino acid or proteins, are pulled into different pools in the body. We kind of trick the digestive system that it bypasses the rumen and ends up in the small intestine, and we are pulling an amino acid across the intestinal lining, then the mineral will come with it. Unfortunately, the cost of organic minerals are higher, varying anywhere from 10 to 15 times more expensive for trace minerals, for example, compared to 4 to 18 cents more per cow per day, depending on the level and the types of trace minerals that are organically bound that you are supplementing. So certainly strategies of when you would feed organic trace minerals could be as follows. One, we are recommending to replace 25 to third of the added trace minerals in the ration coming from organic sources. So you may have, for example, two thirds zinc sulfate, one third zinc protonate, for example. Uh, those animals that are experiencing embryo transfer appear to have a real benefit. Uh, some of the work done out of Pennsylvania would indicate that we get more number one eggs in terms of donor cows and a higher conception rate on recipient cows. Certainly when environmental disease stress occurs on cows, it appears this helps us on the immune system. And I think the data would support using it in transition cows, dry, close up and early lactation cows. The new kid on the block would be organic selenium. This was cleared by FDA in September 3rd, 2003. This is produced by taking a media that is high in selenium content and then allow yeast to grow on it. And the yeast then produce a key product called selenomethionine. That is the biologically active form of selenium in the animal. This source may overcome low absorption or poor absorption of inorganic selenium, such as in the selenite and selenate forms. We have found herds in the Midwest in which selenium supplementation was certainly adequate, but blood levels were actually deficient. This will cost you probably about four cents to add about three or four milligrams per cow per day. And we recommend replacing half of the inorganic sources in the lactating ration and then feed all six milligrams for the dry cow trying to improve immune system and animal health. 
Uh, this structure shows the two selenium products. One on top is methionine, the key amino acid needed for high producing and uh, lactating dairy cattle. Notice the sulfur where it's located in this structure. We go to the bottom one and the yeast then take and replace the sulfur with selenium. And that is your biologically active form, selenium methionine, that has its positive effects on dairy cattle. Another aspect is looking at adequate levels using blood parameters. Listed on this PowerPoint are three different measurements. You have the whole blood serum and the enzyme analyses. And you have three categories, deficient, marginal, or adequate. And the key point is from Michigan State is be sure the blood levels fall in these safe ranges. Here at Illinois, we tend to use whole blood both at the veterinary school and our diagnostic labs to determine deficient, marginal, or adequate levels. One way to get these microminerals into these animals and vitamins would be UA premix. This happens to be one used at the University of Illinois, developed a number of years ago by Dr. Jimmy Clark. And if you feed one tenth pound of this product, this will deliver all the microminerals and vitamin requirements that we have listed in this module. So this is a premix. It will cost us approximately six to seven cents per cow per day for that one tenth pound. So you can see how you can build and balance these on out in your feeding program. You're welcome to use this as a guideline or certainly go out and have it bid out and use on your farm or with your clientele. Finally, let's say a few words about vitamins in terms of levels and functions. Again, a very busy slide, which we'll let you digest, but what we have here are the three key fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, and E. These are expressed as international units per cow per day, which is the common way of supplementing vitamins to lactating and dry cows. Across the top, you have dry cows as far off and close up, and then you have fresh cows and early lactation cows. And you can see that the, the vitamin A and D levels stay fairly constant across the board. Vitamin E levels, because of the impact it has on transition cows and animal health, higher levels during these really key times of dry and early lactation cows. These these numbers are fairly close to the new NRC guidelines. So let's summarize this module with several take-home messages. First of all, trace mineral levels are based on the supplemental sources. We certainly know that this is key and recommend using milligrams per cow per day. Be sure you check these milligrams of added trace minerals to the diet. And here at Illinois, Wisconsin, and Michigan, we look at basically only the supplemental sources, not the background found in most feedstuffs. Next, we know organic trace minerals can improve animal health and reproductive performance, and we are recommending organic selenium to be added to dairy cow rations. Well, that completes this module. Thanks. Have a great day.